In this tutorial I will share all the steps I used to create this cute stylized strawberry scene in Blender. This is a nice project for beginners since I'll be going through the modeling, materials and lighting setup necessary to create this piece. I'll take you through all the steps slowly so your end result will be similar to mine. Let's get right into it. Before we start we will need to activate PR ISOCAM. To do this, go to edit and click on preferences. Click on the add-ons tab and search for ISO. Make sure that ISOCAM is activated. If you press N, your sidebar will pop up and you will see a tab with PR ISOCAM. ISOCAM will have a few camera presets that we will be using later in this tutorial. Now let's get into the modeling. Press A to select all, X and then delete to remove everything. Press Shift A to add a plane and rename it to body. Go into edit mode by pressing tab. Press E to extrude it up in the z-axis. I will extrude it up at 3 meters. Now press S to scale it up. I will scale it up by around 2. Now we will extrude up again by pressing E. Once again, we will scale it down. Leave edit mode by pressing tab and subdivide the object by pressing control 2. If you click on your modifiers tab, you will see that it has added a subdivision modifier. You can also add this by clicking on add modifier and picking subdivision surface. You can increase the levels and render here as well. I will leave both on 2. Right click the object and shade smooth. Press tab to go back into edit mode. Press 3 to go into face select or click on the icon in the upper left corner. Select the top face and press I to inset it. Now press G and Z to move the face down on the Z axis. Now we can play around a bit with the shape until we're satisfied. Press 2 to go into edge select. Hold alt and click on the edge to select the whole loop and scale it up a bit. This is all personal preference so you can change it as you like. That's it for the body. We will now start with the leaves. Click on the body and press tab to go into edit mode. Make sure edge select is active. Click on one of the top edges. Duplicate it by pressing shift D and press Y to move it on the Y axis. With the new edge selected, press P and separate it by selection. Leave edit mode by pressing tab, select our new object, rename it to leaf and go back into edit mode. Press 1 to go into vertex select. Press A to select all and press E and Y to extrude the edge in the Y axis. We will now be adding some loop cuts to shape the leaf. Press Ctrl R to add loop cuts on the side. Use your mouse scroll wheel to increase the number of cuts to 2. Use right click to confirm your cuts. Select two vertices at a time and scale them down in the x-axis to create a leaf shape.
add another loop cut on the Y axis. Go into add select by pressing two, then press G and Z to move them down a bit. Press Ctrl B to bevel the edge and use your mouse wheel so the bevel is three cuts. Activate proportional editing by pressing O or click the icon in the top. Select the side edges and move them down on the Z axis. You can increase or decrease the proportional editing radius with your scroll wheel. Do the same for the other side of your leaf until you're satisfied with the curve of your leaf. Turn off proportional editing, press A to select all and E to extrude up. Leave edit mode, right click on the object and set origin and click on set origin to geometry. Right click and shade smooth. Click 7 on your numpad to go into top view. Press G and then Y to move your leaf in the Y axis and move the leaf towards the center of your strawberry. You can scale your leaf up or down if you want to adjust the size. Press period to change the pivot point to 3D cursor. You can also change this in this little menu up here. Press Alt D to make a link duplication of your leaf. Press R, Z and 60 to rotate it 60 degrees. Press Shift R to repeat the transform. Select all your leaves by holding shift and clicking on them. Press Alt D to duplicate and then press Z to move them up a tiny bit. Press R, Z and 30 to rotate the leaves 30 degrees. Press period to change the pivot point to median point and scale them down a tiny bit. You can now move your leaves a bit down if necessary. We will now be creating the stem. Press Shift A and add a new plane. Press G and Z to move it up. Go into edit mode and scale the plane down. Press 1 on your numpad to go into front view. Extrude the plane up twice. Press Z and select X-ray or use the icon in the top right to activate X-ray mode. Select the top vertices and move them a bit to the top right. Press R to rotate them and scale them up a tiny bit. Rotate and move the middle vertices as well and scale them down a bit. Scale down the bottom as well. Leave edit mode and deactivate x-ray. Press ctrl 2 to subdivide your object and right click to shade smooth. Go back into edit mode, go into face select by pressing 3 and select the top face. Press I to inset the face. Move the stem into position and scale it to your liking. I now actually noticed I forgot to name the object, so double click the name and name it stem. We will now add the seeds. Press Shift A and add a cube. Move it a bit to the side. 
go into edit mode and scale it down, and then scale it up a bit in the set axis. Leave edit mode and press Ctrl 2 to subdivide and shade it smooth. We will be using phase snapping to place the seeds on the body. Open the snapping menu and select phase project. Activate project individual elements. Press shift tab or the snap icon to activate snapping. Press 1 on your numpad to go into front view. Press G and Z to move your seed up. You can now see that it snapped to the body. I want to adjust its position and rotation a tiny bit, so we will deactivate snapping. Press G and Y to move it a tiny bit more into the body. Change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Rename the cube to seed. Press Alt D R Z 60 and then Shift R to repeat the transform. Go back into front view and select the seed. Activate snapping and press Alt D to duplicate the seed and move it down. Deactivate snapping and move it a tiny bit more into the body. Change its pivot point to median point, press R and X to rotate it a tiny bit on the X axis. Change the pivot point back to 3D cursor. Press R, Z and 30 to rotate the seat 30 degrees. Press Alt D R Z 60 and then Shift R to repeat the transform. And that's it, we're now done with the modeling and we'll start giving our strawberry some colors. Press Z and choose Material Preview or use the icon in the top right. Select the strawberry body and go to the Materials tab and click New. Name the new material body. Change the base color to a nice red color. If you want to use the same color as I did, go to the hex tab and enter E76248. Select the first instance of the leaf object and add a new material. Name it leaf and change the base color to 48B667 or any other green color you want. Select the stem, hold shift and click on the leaf. Press Ctrl L and select link materials. Select the first instance of the seed object and add a new material. Name it seed and change the base color to FFCDAB or any other color you want. That's it for the coloring. We will now add a camera to our scene. Press N to show your sidebar and click on the PR ISOCAM tab. We will now add a game ISO cam. This will add a nice orthographic camera to our scene. Go to the output properties and change the width to 1080 and height to 1350. This is what I usually use for Instagram. Select the camera and move it up a bit along the Z axis. We will now fix our composition. Select the whole strawberry, press G and move it a bit to the right. Change the pivot point to median point. 
Press R twice and rotate the strawberry. You can rotate it exactly as you want. You can also scale it up or down if you want to. Duplicate the strawberry by pressing Shift D and move it to the left button. Scale it down a bit and rotate it. Duplicate again by pressing Shift D and move it up. Scale and rotate it as you like. Now select all of them and move them into a nice position. Press 7 on your numpad to go into top view. Select the strawberries one by one and position them around the 3D cursor. This will give your piece a bit more depth. Go into camera view by pressing 0 on your numpad and make sure all your strawberries are still in view. We will now add a background. Press Shift A and add a plane. Move it down a tiny bit and scale it up so it covers your whole camera view. Go to the Materials tab and add a new material. Name it Background. Change the base color to E7A8DD. Increase the roughness to 0.8. We will now add the lighting. Open the shading pop-up menu in the top right and activate Scene Lights and Scene World. Press Shift A and add an area light. Press G and Z to move it up. I'm moving it up around 12 meters. Go to your light settings. Increase the power to 1300. Change the shape to disk and increase the size to 5. Set the pivot point to 3D cursor. Duplicate your light with Shift D then rotate it by pressing R, X and 45. Rotate it again on the Z axis by pressing R, Z and 30 minus. Duplicate this light and press R, Z and 130. Move it back a bit by pressing G and Z twice. Press G and Z to move the whole light down a tiny bit. I like to add a light in the back to give it a nice gradient. Go into top view and duplicate the top area light. Move it to the background. If you want to move it into the same position as me, open your item tab and fill in minus 11 on X, 11 on Y and 1.3 on Z. We will now change the world color. This will improve the coloring of our scene quite a bit. Open your world settings and change the world color to E081D3. Now go to your render properties.
Go to color management and change the look to high contrast. Change the exposure to 0.2. Now change the render engine to cycles and change device to GPU compute. You can change your render sampling here as well. For Instagram, I usually use 128 or 256. Both work just fine. Now all that is left is to render your image by going to render, render image or pressing F12. And there you have it. I hope you stuck with it all the way through and were able to get the desired result. If anything was unclear or you have any other questions or requests, please let me know in the comments. If you decide to post your artwork to Instagram, tag me in it because I'd love to see your work. Links to my socials are in the description. Goodbye.